And on top of that, see, we're in this Passover era, so you can't stop. Look at somebody and say, you got to keep passing over. Because that word Pesach means you'll either limp or you'll leap. Say, I got to get my leaping in order. And every year is key. There's so many passes, Passovers throughout the Word of God. Examples. And I believe right now, God is dealing this year with the promise that he's given us and how we're going to be free in it in the future. How are we apostolically going to see it happen? Now, what does that mean? The characteristics of an apostle is building, finishing. How will we finish things that got activated back in the 70s so that we can build again? Warring, governing, and connecting generations, mothering and fathering generations so that a new generation is brought in and we're not disconnected. And you know what that means? Three generations must prophesy, it says at the end of Isaiah 59. We've got to, be, we've got to have three generations prophesying the same thing. So it's connected. That's what a place like this represents. And then in it, it's a harvest season. And yet all through the word of God, we see the war over harvest. And here's what the Lord told me to say to all of us, every one of us, including myself. You are going to have to break out of conventional ways of thinking so you see the prosperity for your future. Now, here's the first thing. I have three things I want to loose over you. As we move forward, covenant people will be demonstrating and activating the laws of war. See, in Deuteronomy 20, it has all these laws of war. So it's not that we're never to have war, but there are principles of how we operate in war. And I have read that chapter over and over, and with it, there's a lot of things. You know, if you just got married, go back and stay with your wife for a year. Uh, if you're just building a house, don't get in too much war till that house is established. But the real thing was, Moses went back to Abraham's covenant and said, now when you go into your promise, you're going to have to see your enemies. See, you say, okay, let's get to the New Testament. Jesus said it this way. You're not going to take the spoils of what's been taken from me if you don't bind the strong man. Everything you find in the Old Covenant, you're going to find a fulfillment of activation in the New Covenant. He said the same thing. And so, I went back, and if you would, look with me at Genesis 15. That is really where we find the Lord making covenant, cutting covenant with Abraham. Now, I want to say a couple of things to us about it. Because we are in a season of war and a season of promise manifestation. 
you're going to have to see the conflict but not take your heart off of the promise that hasn't come into full manifestation. And you're going to have to review your promise. Doesn't matter how old you are in here, how young you are. If you are still breathing when you leave here today, there is something that still needs to be activated in you. And here, this is where God comes and says, don't be afraid, Abraham. I'm going to extend you into the future. It was really about him giving him his son, Isaac. And then he makes, he cuts his covenant with him. And after he does that, he says, now, you're not going to get to see everything, but in the fourth generation to come, your descendants are going to go into what I promised you. See, some of you are warring right now for things great-grandma heard. And that's why you can't quite understand the war and why you're in it. Because 400 years later, 476 years later, they are finally entering into what God said here. Think of our nation. There were things said 476 years ago, finally, God's going to start working on them. And it wasn't because God didn't want to work on them then. But he has to always find this remnant that's been pulled aside that he can work with. Poke somebody next to you and say, I think he's talking about you. And he said, the reason I, could, I can't do this right now, Abraham, to give you, because, you know, Israel, the Israelis were in and out of Canaan. But he said, the reason I really can't give you this thing that I'm telling you about right now is because I've got to let wickedness work in a way that When you take the promise, the wicked is annihilated. See, that's a principle, uh, that's a law of war. 